there, Postal here. So today we're going to be taking out the A6M5. Uh, this is tier 6 Japanese. Uh, this is the Navy fighter line. Um, we're actually trying to go get a mission. This is uh, one of the missions for the American uh, bomber, Cadman Miller. I, I don't Let's even go. know. Uh, you know, he's a jazz player from the uh, late 1920s. Uh, he also became a uh, bomber. Anywho, uh, it's a three-sector map, which I'm really not fond of, uh, but oh well, so be it. Uh, the key to this mission is get a sector, hopefully an important one, that enemies will continue to um, try to attack, and you can defend it easily enough. <laughs> um, A6M5, in my opinion, is pretty darn good for this mission. It's really built for defense. I mean, we'll see what we can do um, in regards to this. So I'm doing some wiggling there, trying to avoid some of the flak attack. And um, we're heading up a little bit. Nothing's down low right now, so we're going to head up and shoot some. I'm paying attention to the map. Uh, I've got an inbound plane, so rather than using my energy going up and, you know, eventually floundering, we're going to go down a little bit. Let the um, enemy heavy fighter here think he can turn back around on us and get him good. I do keep in mind, um, I do have the special pilot for this plane. Um, Akira Kani, I think is how her name is pronounced. Anyway, and so, you know, we've got some buffs in regards to some of her metrics. Her um, damage output, her speed, um, her maneuverability, actually, I'm sorry, not her speed. And as such, uh, it's going to be a little bit buffed compared to a similar A6M5. Unfortunately, both those ground attackers were taken by a friendly plane. So I've only gotten one defense kill so far. This guy's outside the sector now, so I'm going to stop chasing him. And the guy that was chasing and kill securing uh, the people that I had um, hurt before uh, is now chasing that guy that's outside the sector, so yay. So I got another one there, so we're up to two. Now we've got three. And I think when I was first counting this, when I was actually playing the game, I think I missed that first, um, you know, counting that first heavy fighter that was inbound on us. Because we had actually captured the sector right before I killed him. And so that counts as a um, defense kill. Now do keep in mind, you know, as I'm looking at this map, the, thing, the issue with three sector maps is if we went and captured the center here, at the time, we were we were up on the other military base. We would have gone to air supremacy. Um, and so, in this situation, I thought it be would it would be more viable for me to just stay here, get another defense kill, and I waited for that ground attacker to get in my sector, and then started attacking. Him. There's nothing to do right now, so let's go ahead and let's cap the center. Looks like the enemy's putting up a really good fight for the. Uh, military base on the other side there. In fact, it looks like they're going to capture it. And so we can just go ahead and um, s try not to die. Holy cow. Uh, try to capture the center here. Not part of our mission as far as the pilot missions is concerned. I wasn't going to go after that ground attacker. It would take too long to kill him. Go for something uh, lower hit points. Get it knocked out. Excellent. So now we've got two sectors to their one. Um, their military base is going to be trying to capture the center, of course. So I need to be mindful of that. We've got a multi-roll inbound. Doing it just quick up and over here. Still getting some hits on us from the rear gunner of the ground attacker here. So something you may notice that I'm doing. Maybe not. Um, but I'm actually kind of sort of... Oh, don't do this. Oh, you freaking moron, Postal. I forgot I did that. That's frustrating now. It was really frustrating when it first happened. I'm like, really, you moron? 
Um, just trying to get the kill. Um, trying to get the defense kill. I didn't want somebody else to get it. Uh, anyway, something that you may have noticed that I do, it's... <sighs> so, as I'm firing the guns, if I'm trying to um, take down a target, and I think I need my f as much um, firepower as possible, I'll actually let off the trigger for just a, a slight fraction of a second to allow my guns to not overheat. So the 20mm cannons on this plane are very strong, but they do overheat relatively quickly. Not super fast by any means, but when, you, when you've got a sustained amount of damage that you need to put out, I'll fire, hold the trigger for a little bit, let go for a little bit, and continue that type of pattern. Whoop, that's the ground attacker. We don't want to go for that. It'll take too long to kill. Um, and that way my guns don't completely overheat. If I think I'm going to be killing a plane... Um, dang. Freaking FW190 uh, spawned right behind me. Double dang. Okay, uh, so we might be uh, in some trouble here. With all the ways we camped... Uh, excuse me, we capped the center. So that should be um, should be should be pretty good. Let's spawn back in the center. We can get some of these defense kills that I completely lost track of. So hopefully we can get the nine that we need. Um. Anyway, so I'll do that if I if the plane I'm shooting at has a lot of hit points, and um, I know if I just held down my trigger, I'm definitely going to be overheating. Um, I will do that kind of tap maneuver so that way. Uh, hopefully my guns will not overheat, or at least not overheat um, so quickly to where I can continue to use the guns and actually knock out the plane in front of me. Alright, so, we are in the center here. Their rocket base is going to be um, attacking the hell out of us. Their enemy fighters and multi-rolls and heavy fighters are probably going to be attacking the hell out of us. And so at this point... This is a pretty good spot to be. We can hopefully get some good kills here. Squall line, though. So every kill that happens is the last time that particular plane can be killed. So we definitely need to be mindful of that and be um, you know, just trying to get as many defense kills as we can. Spitfire 1, really not a big deal for us. Um, we'll go over the metrics of this plane when I get back to the hangar. Um... I actually have this plane built for speed, and simply because of the pilot. If I didn't have this pilot, this special pilot, I would go for maneuverability. But since the pilot already helps maneuverability, um, I figured, what the heck, let's test out a speed build on a zero, and I'm actually quite, quite fond of it. Uh, let's see if we can chase this guy down. Not shooting him, uh, or not killing him anyway, while he's outside the sector waiting till he's back inside the next sector so we can get the defense kill and there we go um crud it's a bomber it's probably gonna be dead probably need to turn around here uh, i don't have any boost available and he's moving away so rather than spending too much energy on that we've got a plane that's inbound on our position yeah, it's a ground attack plane. It's going to take a while to kill. I'm still going to have a better chance against this than I would against a bomber that's moving away from me. Um, yeah. Alright, air supremacy. So we're almost out of time here. We need to get these guns on target and try to get this guy killed as quickly as possible. Ah, crud. Alright, i pretty sure I got nine. I got at least eight, maybe. I don't know. Let's head back and check it out. Awesome, was able to get that ninth one. I didn't think I had it at the end there, but I'm glad I did, because um, that would have been a little bit frustrating. I mean, although honestly, this is the first try that I was doing in the A6M5. Um, some boneheaded moves there. Uh, you know, as far as winning the game is concerned, they didn't impact the winning of the game. Um, they were just frustrating for me, as, you know, trying to do my best in the game. Uh, so frustrating. But, A6M5, excellent, excellent plane, even without the crazy uh, awesome pilot that comes with this. Well, doesn't come with it all the time, but 
I was able to get Akira Akane. Um, I've actually built this particular plane for speed. The A6M5 Master, that skill it provides 10% maneuverability, 10% damage by the forward firing weapons. Only works on the A6M5, so you really keep her for that. I mean, you gotta think, the plane's already really maneuverable anyway, and you're doing extra damage. For Hunter's Grip, the burst length and the, the range of the forward firing armament is improved by 10%, so that's, that's incredible too. Still get these guns overheated pretty quickly, but that's my own fault. I've used my la uh, well the, the sixth skill point for firefighter. You need this skill set for your Japanese fighter pilots. It's just it's just not any kind of question. In fact, this would be the first one I go for uh, if I'm I got a one point pilot. I'm definitely putting firefighter down. Uh, right now, I'm working on uh, just who knows what. Actually, to be honest, I could go for engine guru. Could go for Aer aerodynamics expert could go for marksman 2 um, I'm really not sure yet I've got plenty of time to think about it I've built my a6m5 for speed which sounds ridiculous but hold that thought the maneuverability on this plane is already ridiculous right I'm at 108 and I'm not even I'm not even trying to get speed uh, maneuverability in fact I've kind of countered my maneuverability as we'll see here in just a second with my equipment and I'm still at 108. Yeah, I can outmaneuver those completely specked out maneuverable A6M5s that might be on the enemy team. But do you know how often I run into that? Not very often at all. So the maneuverability that I've got for this, set up for this plane is already well and good enough, more than good enough, for 95% of the time I play this plane. Hell, probably more than 95% of the time. Again, you just don't run into specked out a6m5s all that often anymore and when you do guess what i've got the airspeed to really uh to actually have an impact on the battle where if you're full maneuverability on an a6m5 you might actually be lacking that um the paint that i've got here is the three percent paint so my cruise speed right there starts helping off with that um my because you get 10% boost to maneuverability just with your pilot, I said, well, let's just go all in with the airspeed. My airframe, uh, I've got the polished skin. It's experimental polished skin, so it actually doesn't impact the maneuverability as negatively as it would if it was just normal polished skin, so that's certainly helpful. Um, I did put lightweight wing frame on here. Just to, I mean, anything else really didn't make sense to me. Um, adding extra HP to this plane doesn't make sense to me. Reinforced skin could be helpful, um, but that would impact the speed, and I didn't want to impact the speed. So m my thought process was let's go with the, the wing frame here. I am maneuverable enough to try to avoid taking damage in the first place, and we'll go from there. As far as the engine is concerned, got the operated engine on here. Uh, you know, a lot of people would would conceive of going with the power unit, the lightweight power unit. But again, my maneuverability is excellent as it is. So let's get more speed. Um, and last but not least, of course, we've got our um, experimental sight on here. Um, Move up to advanced. So. You know, these two options here, plus having the engine cooling rather than the engine restart, just adding to more speed on top of speed. And what I use this speed for isn't to stick with heavy fighters. It's not to, like, you know, try to race a BF-109. No, what I use it for is to get from sector to sector, get to where I need to get to quickly. If I need to um, get up to higher altitude, I can use that boost to get up to higher altitude. Keep in mind, you don't do that if you're you're in a dogfight with, like, two or three planes. Um, you only do that when it's a 1v1 and the enemy plane's not paying attention. Um, so I really like the setup of this plane, going with a speed build, hilariously, uh, because that extra speed really does help me get where I need to be when I need to get there. And still having great maneuverability to be a zero when I get there. So I'm I for, for my play style, I really do enjoy this setup. I haven't even gotten it to the ultimate equipment but I can only imagine um, how good this will be once I get it to ultimate. As far as my consumables are concerned, I've gone ahead now that it's specialized, I've put the um, exhaust bleed system on here, and you know that's gonna help with my chance of fire being reduced, 
That plus the firefighter skills uh, point being used on the pilot means that I do not need to use a fire extinguisher on my consumable. I can use my first aid package on the consumable and that will um, just allow me to put my pilot back in there and get my accuracy back up as quickly as possible. I'm not overly afraid of fires in this plane, believe it or not. Um, and even if I do get set on fire, I can put it out pretty quickly with my firefighter skill point. Pneumatic control assist, uh, simply because really, honestly, there's nothing better. Uh, emergency control system is definitely an option for my place, although I'd rather be able to get that little bit more maneuverability if I need to. If I happen to get caught out by a specked out zero on the enemy team, I can always um, use my pneumatic control assist. Keep in mind, even things like Spitfires, if they, if I run into a specialized Spitfire and they use pneumatic control assist, they can probably outmaneuver me. So this will also help me uh, when I run into those types of situations. Again, just another reason why I'm not worried about being outmaneuvered. Uh, I already talked about engine cooling, so we've got engine cooling on here for that boost of speed, and then universal ammo because I've got the credits to do that. Uh, I, I really do like this plane. I like this was one of the the few zeros I actually liked beforehand, before this pilot, um, and you know getting the pilot afterwards certainly made me like it even more. The zeros are pretty one trick ponies, right? Really bad altitude performance, pretty poor air speed, pretty strong guns an excellent maneuverability but that's a lot that's a one that's a big huge one trick pony right um i kept the a7 up at tier 7 just because there's really nothing like it at tier 7 um and then then it completely jumps the rails at tier 8 it goes to a different different play style but um the way that, that the a6 m50 can be set up it really fits my playstyle. I really like the impact you can have with this particular plane on a battle. And um, yeah, yeah, I, 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 this plane particularly I highly recommend, even without the the um, the great pilot that you can get. Um, and then once you get up to the these multi rolls, these are really hard hitting multi rolls. In fact, this J7W2 is the only plane I've actually gotten a Gabreski in. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> Um, but the rest of the line is like, eh. I mean, it does what it does really well, but it's not um, not necessarily the most mentally engaging kind of play style. It's kind of why I built this plane for speed, to give me a little bit more flexibility. So what do you think of my setup? What do you think of this plane? What do you think of my assessment of the line? Have you gone down the zero line? Do you prefer the key line over the um, zero line? Or do you prefer to just stay away from this type of plane and you prefer the um, the higher altitude fighters? I'd love to hear your feedback. Um, and I'd love to hear your feedback on, on my uh, setup. I'm not changing my setup because it goes really, really well for my play style. But I'd love to hear your guys' assessment of it. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me and I hope you have a great day. Bye.